Okay, let's move on to the next discussion segment of the show. I am super excited about this segment. Uh, our first our guest today is a media professional. She is a talented international radio broadcaster mm -hmm. who has worked in different broadcast outfits around the world, including The Voice of America in Washington, D.C., where she retired after 20 years. She's now here with us in Daily Trust with a podcast team and she is Halima Jimro. Welcome to the show. You're welcome, ma'am. Thank you, ladies. All right, so Thank can you, you have me. Yes, you're welcome. So can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? What do you want to know about me? Like everything. Know, everything. <laughs> everything. No, everything. <laughs> <everything. laughs> okay, like you say, my name is uh, Halima Jimro. Yeah. I'm a media professional. Mm -hmm. Worked with the Voice of America for 20 years. Um, a mother of two boys, mm. Hassan 22, Ismail 18. Okay. And I come from a large African family, four wives. We are about 42 kids. Wow. wow. So wow. even though we've lost like 18, 19, mm, okay. now we're 22, 23, boys, girls, uh, women, men. <laughs> So that's it. I think something you're yet to establish is where you're from. Oh, yes. Um, the United Nations. I'm from everywhere. <laughs> okay, I'm originally from Niger Republic. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I was born in Maine Soroa. Okay. In the Difa region, we are neighbors with uh, Damaturu, Ayobe, really? and Borno. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm from Niger Republic, and I became U.S. citizen. Maybe next I'll be a Nigerian citizen. Who knows? Oh, we love to have you. So, so what, what do you love, you know, most about being a journalist? Being a journalist is the the teaching part. We're not just journalists. We're teachers. We're counselors. We're guides. We are mothers for the men, fathers. So we we do it all. So that's the teaching part. You. You know, people learn a lot from one program, one episode. It's, yeah, that's what I love about it. Okay, so what drives you when it comes to your professional, uh, you know, your career? What drives you? My passion for what I do and the love for what I do. That's what really gets me going every day. Yeah, the passion and the love for what I do. Okay, so uh, w tell us uh, one of the biggest challenges you've ever faced. Challenges. Yeah. As wow. a journalist. As a journalist. Wow. Challenges. Yeah, there are a lot of them, but I can say the biggest challenge was for me was leaving my parents in 1996, go to the U.S. Washington, and found myself within or with some great journalists that I used to listen to on radio and I couldn't believe that I was right there with them and I was supposed to work with them. That was really big for me and little by little I, you know, I got to settle and got uh, things got smooth. Hmm. Yeah, so, so, so that, that was the big challenge really. So was there a time that you said, I need to give up, I need to, I can't do this anymore? Was there ever a time like that? Yes, there was, but it wasn't about the work, but it was about the new place I found myself in, America, the environment, I, it was new, I didn't know anyone, and the way people live, we just, uh, we would just meet at work, and after work, everybody was, you know, on his own, you go home, you find... And like I told you in the beginning, I came from a large family. Mm -hmm. I have never found myself alone in my apartment. That was really challenging for me, and I didn't want to stay. Hmm. I didn't want to. I talked to the manager. They said, no, you just got here. Just be patient. I said, no, 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 I can't. <laughs> I don't like the country. Then. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they sat me down. I think the now house service uh, uh, chief Ali Mustafa, if he, if he can remember, he sat me down to just be patient. And Steve Lucas he was the the whole division um, um, uh, supervisor. He sat me down to talk to me, and I said, "Okay, let me give it a try." 
And guess what? You ended up spending. I met my husband. Oh! So I fell in love. We wow. got married and America became home. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Did you spent how many years? In America? Yes, in America. 25 years. 25 years. Yes, but what about uh, a voice of uh, Af America? Sorry. Uh, 20 years. 20 years. Yes. That's yes. quite a That's long time. Yeah. Halfway yeah. through. Yeah, 96, <laughs> 2016. Quite a long yeah. time. All right. So, um... Was there, uh, what do you consider your greatest achievement? Wow. Do you really want to go there? Yes. <laughs> in your career or in life? Career. General? I would say working for 20 years at the Voice of America, mingling with people, you know, and do 20 years peacefully, respectfully, and retire. People are still missing you. We still, you're still in contact. So I think this is, I can say it's uh, one of the achievements. Okay. Is there a particular piece you've done or a particular program that you love so, so much that you still remember even now that you've left the, um, Washington? Yeah. We have this show, um, Yoda Gobi, mm. that... Uh, we used to do, I think it's still on. So we, it's a, actually, it's a youth program, youth and women. So we did a lot of programming, but something that really still, when I think about it was about rape. A little girl, I think she was three, she got raped in Kaduna. Wow. She ended up being killed. So we talked to, to the father, the mother, and how they were threatened by community leaders who were supposed to be with them, support them, help them get justice. So still, you know, I, I, when I think about that, I, I feel like I didn't do much to help. I, each time I say, what, what, what could I have done to help more to, I still, you know, think about that. Mm. Now, uh, was there uh, a career setback you faced that, you know, later turned out to be an advantage? A setback? I cannot say for sure because, you know, usually the people who get setbacks mm. are those who set, like, I wouldn't say ambitious, yeah, maybe ambitious, those who want to uh, climb the ladder okay. and be the big bosses. Mm. That's not me. That's not for me. Okay. I am contented with what I do, and that contentment give me what I want and get me where I want to go. Mm -hmm. So I, I can't say setback because I'm, you know, how, how can I put it? <laughs> I'm not dreaming. I'm okay. not, yeah. Because, come again? A moving train. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you mean, but yeah, something like that. Okay. <laughs> All right, all right. Uh, and now, uh, how do you create motivation for yourself and also for your team? It's still about that passion, about that love that I talk about of what I do. My team, um, actually, we've created this environment that we, we're honest with each other, we respect each other. Okay. We don't hide anything from each other. You do something to me, I don't like it. I come to you and say, look, you did this, I didn't like it. And we, in, we, uh, we're encouraged to do that. So I think, yeah, and we share the little we know, which well, we help each other. Because working as a team is really, because it, we, we cannot just say we're a team and I do my thing, you do your, no, we are a team. a team. And yeah, so we work as a team and we, respect each other and we motivate each other so but was there at any point uh, as a woman because as women sometimes women journalists face some form of harassment or um, there's a form of gender you know par um, disparity you know going on sometimes in the newsroom is there at any point have you faced anything like that not really or I can say yes but um, Ima, Ima. um come again no, 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 yeah, no. Okay, okay, yeah, not really because I don't see myself as th it, there is something I cannot do. I, I chose to be a journalist so I can face all the challenges or the hurdles, the obstacles. You know, I can, 
I'm not saying I can do what a man can do, okay. but as a journalist, mm -hmm. I can do what a male journalist can do. Mm -hmm. If he can go to a, um, a battlefield, I can go there. Mm -hmm. If right. he can go into a well to look for an information, I can walk down into that well. And so I, I cannot really say that I... Okay, uh, talking about you, you know, uh, doing what a man can do and going, you know, the extra mile. Have as, you, a as a journalist. As a journalist. Yes, as a journalist. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever gone, uh, in the course of your career, have you ever gone above and beyond for the job? And if yes, tell us about that what time. What do you mean? Above, above and, and beyond, beyond yeah. like uh, you, know, you know, I'm old school, so explain to me what do you mean? Like going, uh, for example, uh, I know a lot of women don't get sent to the battlefield as journalists because, like you said, gender disparity and all that. So uh, that's an example. You know, my I can say I've been lucky to work for the Voice of America. You know, the American society they don't have this. Okay, like if there's a schedule of um, assignment so men women can we could go anywhere they send they because we have we have women in Afghanistan Iraq mm -hmm. stuff like that mm -hmm. so okay all right so how does uh, daily trust differ from uh, voice of America what makes it different and why did you decide to leave voice of America for daily trust you really want me to compare right. VOA and yes, yes, mm -hmm. we do. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> don't do don't do this. Please do that. <laughs> okay, within the Nigerian context, mm -hmm. I can okay. say Daily Trust is the VOA of Nigeria. <laughs> oh wow. Let's just say actually. that because only yeah, I've worked uh, I've I've done some consultation works okay. with some coming up uh, and some radios that are, are coming up. So even trying to compare those radios mm -hmm. that are coming up with daily trust will not is 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 being unfair to those right because um, daily trust is here i think 1998 that's a long I, time i think it's a long time so mm -hmm. is a house name is established is so yeah so you work with the podcast team yes could I, you could you walk us through you know some of the activities that you do there yeah but i i forgot to she asked me why i've decided to join to join daily, daily trust. trust okay even my my retirement okay. i took an early retirement okay. because to me after 20 years in a place there is nothing more to learn uh, but i had a lot to give okay. back oh, yeah. so i've decided why not retire and go back to my country niger and give back, back. Mm. you know to the community and learn the little i know with the upcoming journalists yeah. unfortunately when i went to niger they didn't understand that all they think about is money they can't afford me mm. they can't afford me so it's it it hurts me a lot because i even told them it's not about the money mm. i can do this for free mm. i just what they say yeah they under but i I said okay, so <laughs> I think that's why I and, and one of the reasons maybe I'm here daily trust and the I, English Niger is French, mm. but I feel a little bit comfortable with English. I can yeah, so I think that is about giving back to the community. Okay, let's go okay, back, to, back to the podcast. <laughs> oh, could you tell us you know the experience with the podcast? The podcast that. is amazing. Um, it's, it's the same with radio, but different, mm -hmm. because podcast is, uh, we can say it's radio online, radio online, you, it's a file audio, you, up, you we upload it online, and you, that you can, you or everyone listening to us can download or download it to any device. Mm. Yeah, so it's like radio, but on demand. Actually, oh. podcast is personal, on demand, broadcast. That's the meaning, the definition of podcast. So it's, yeah. Okay, which has actually been more valuable in your career? Is it your education or your experience? And if you could actually tell us a bit about your educational background, education. I would appreciate that. If, uh, no, okay, my education, I have studied English. Okay. I went to 
actually from primary to university uh, in Niger Republic. Then I went to Ileife, Obafemi Awolowo, where I got my BA in English. So to come back to your question, mm -hmm. experience and what? education. Education. If I had followed my education, I would have been a teacher somewhere. Okay. Mm -hmm. But here I am. So I would say experience is yeah. You need education. You can learn. You can read. You can write. But your education has nothing to do with, with what you do. Experience is. I think. I think even now people like the jobs institutions. Are looking more An experience. have experience than, than education. so education. yeah experience. Okay, I have been itching to ask this <laughs> question. <laughs> I actually. think I have an idea. How were you able to balance exactly. family and your career? And considering <laughs> your family, <laughs> you're far away from them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we it's something that we automatically ought to learn and ought to understand to separate work and family and family. Because we are all carrying our a bag of manures, we are all have going through things, we are all having our personal issues, but we're not allowed to bring them to work. Right. So I carry my bag of manure, I come to work, I leave it at the, at the gate. I come in happy, ready to do what I'm here to do. Mm. I do my work, and when I'm done, I leave work here, I pick, pick up my up. bag of manure, <laughs> go home. So don't mix because uh, uh, beside this work, we have a life. Right. Yeah. We have friends, we have mm -hmm. husbands, wives, boyfriends. So, yeah, so we, we, we should be able to really separate the... Because the, the mistake a lot of people do is mixing the two. And once you do that, you're in deep, into deep. <laughs> okay, so uh, what are your next career steps? Career? Yes. None. Do you have much of that? Yeah, no, 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 like, um, like I, you've achieved everything. Honestly, now I'm not aspiring to become. No, I'm just, just leave me doing my podcast okay. <laughs> and give him back. I have no. Um, no, 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 I'm no, no, no. You're good where you are. I'm, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now, uh, what mistake have you made or what mistake uh, have you observed that successful journalists often make while climbing the ladder that you need people to watch out for? Impatience. Impatience. People are, a lot of people want to get there without putting uh, the patience and the hard work. Just be patient. Yeah, I've observed a lot of impatience. Also, a lot of bickering, hating mm -hmm. the workplace. A lot of that. Is, yeah, toxic. which to me doesn't help. If if we we are a team, we should be more than that. We should be a family. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we 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 made, we made mistakes, a lot of conflicts, but that can easily be squashed, squashed, and without patience, mm. we cannot do that. Without patience, we cannot have a, a good relation, healthy relationship at the workplace. You cannot even achieve your life or career goals without patience. So patience is really vital, mm -hmm. is a vital skill for any professional and in, uh, for any profession. Okay, so how would you describe um, the state of journalism in Nigeria? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Some are good, some are bad. Because I keep, each time for our podcast, we call like, especially government officials in Nigeria, I notice it's like they're running away from journalists. They don't want to talk to us. And you guys, as you know, in, 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 the, in our kind of, we need to balance. Mm -hmm. We cannot just go out with a story without mm -hmm. balancing. Balance. And we need to hear from the government side. But that's, that's challenging, actually. So I think it has to do with something, something, I don't know what, but Nigerian journalists know what they're doing wrong. That because journalists should be respected. Journalism is not, it's not for anyone, you know. It's, it's a noble uh, profession, yeah, actually. Exactly, it's noble, and we should keep it as that. But I, th but, but I think... Maybe some journalists are doing things that journalists are not supposed to, supposed to do, 
and they need to look into that. Okay, so where do you see the industry going in the future? Where do you see it in future? Um, daily trust. The industry, like oh. uh, media, media industry. Media, media is here to Especially stay. Especially in Nigeria. Nigeria, yeah, is here to stay with uh, your population, your exposure, your yeah. Media is here to stay and is going to be big. Mm especially with uh, the new media okay mm -hmm. it's just up to to the to to the companies to you know uh, to up, uh, to how can i say to follow the new trend yeah it's up to the uh, news companies to follow the trend develop and come up with new ideas and yeah keep it um, to sustain it okay. so yeah sustain it Okay, so before we wrap up this discussion, which I actually don't feel like doing, okay, so <laughs> do you want to ask more questions? <laughs> what, what, what advice do you have for women journalists, particularly young women, mm -hmm. upcoming young women, journalists? Just be yourselves. Don't try to imitate any those among poor and just be yourselves. Be yourselves. Respect yourself. And your reputation is very important. Protect your reputation, and I think that's it. And and don't wait for the news to come to you. Go well, get it. Go. Get, don't say that I'm a woman. I cannot go into the market. And no, you can. You have chosen to be a journalist. You can do a journalist work, a journalist job. So yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Quite interesting was, conversation. Yes, I actually learned a lot from this conversation. Really? Yes, I did. But, but I'll tell you about it later. For the upcoming journalists, yeah. I am urging you guys, because I'm a mother to you guys, yeah. I'm urging you to be patient. Don't be impatient. Don't be impatient. Be patient. Your turn will come. Because that's the problem people, you know, have at workplace, especially the young, the young ones. Not you, I'm saying the young ones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you are. Well, right. thank you so, thank so you. much for coming on the show. We've it's actually been having quite an interesting conversation. I was, I was conversation. scared of you guys. I didn't no. want to be here. No, thank you. We pulled you through. You, you made me feel comfortable. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you.